do you believe that um, do you believe that Islam is something that is applicable to any country, any culture, at any time? In other words, in other words is it something that's eternal? Yeah. yeah. Justification for that. Yeah, I believe in that. I mean, that's what the religion of Islam claims to be. But then that doesn't mean that it's rigid. It doesn't mean that it doesn't take into consideration the socio-economic or political factors. Because there is an inbuilt flexibility in the religion of Islam, such that it can, it, you can have like you know, culture of for example, if Japan became a Muslim country, yeah, the, the, like maybe Malaysia is a good example because it's the closest to it. Malaysia wasn't a Muslim country, Indonesia wasn't a Muslim country, then became. But if you compare Malaysia and Indonesia to Egypt once again, you're going to find many things in the former that you didn't find in the latter. Because they have a different kind of uh, temperament, a collective temperament, they have a different culture and so on. So I'm not saying that Islam is going to come in and engulf everything. It comes in, yes. Sure, and just pick what fits, pick no, what no, no, it's, change it about a little no, bit and just No, apply. it comes in and gives principles of how to live one's life. Overriding principles: God is the, is the most high. These are these are these are the laws. You know, this is how you should be with your family. This is how you should be with your community. Okay, but then you, as a culture, as a people, bring in your own flavor of that. So you know, in, in Malaysia, it's not going to be the same as Nigeria. And do, 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 your justification for that? Do you believe that? Um, do you believe like human beings are, are also, in that sense, you know, uh, something that is. You can apply to them like the book, the, the, uh, your, the, the book of the Quran would be in your case. Yeah. Now you can apply that to human nature because also human nature is not something that is changing. It's, it's something that you can explain uh, from within like the context of religion. So what, what did you say that again, sorry? So I'm saying you believe that human nature is not something that like changes over time either. It's something that is fixed. <laughs> human because nature is another topic. So let me answer the question. I feel like, I feel like Islam has two or three things that are important and have a cross-section with the psychological literature, yeah? First of all, the idea of fitrah, which is that everyone is born with the predisposition to believe in God, all right? But there's another thing as well, which is that the Quran states that وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And by the self and he who created it. So he inspired it by giving it propensity to do good and propensity to transgress. So a human being has propensity to do good or bad. Okay, both of that is, a, is an integral part of the human project. God has put that in both of us. The, the Quran continues, the one who has purified himself has succeeded. And the one who corrupts himself is, is a failure. So you have the potential as a human being to be either or. Okay, so the, why they say there's a cross section of like the psychological literature is that in, in psychoanalytic theories you'll find that you know the psyche and uh, the dark side of the psyche and all these kind of things is there. You know, the, the unconscious mind, we believe in all of that. In fact, where, where Freud wrote a book on dreams and experimented with like the idea of the unconscious, what where dreams come from, we also believe that dreams can be of the unconscious mind. That was something that was said a thousand four hundred years ago. The the so it's the same thing was there. So when you find that the unconscious mind is composed of these different things, the potential to do good, the potential to do bad, some that can, can surface into the conscious reality and sometimes it's not. But yeah, that's where there's a cross section, I would say, between the psychological literature and the Islamic understanding of, you know, for example, human psychology. Because you know, the, often it's not just against Islam, but against any sort of religion. Um, or any, let's say, dogmatic religion, let's say, in that sense. The common argument is that it can't really be applied to human beings because human beings are essentially an ongoing phenomenon, right? They're like a future orientated and, you know, um, they, 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 they change all the time. And you talked about the fifth part, but, you know, the opposite side would be the sort of like existentialist Jean Paul Sartre and his ilk who would say, actually, we're born without a blueprint, right? We are who we make ourselves to be, how we live our lives out. I mean, I don't know if, if uh, Sartre said that, or not. I'm not, I haven't read that. Well, yeah, yeah, I think he did, yeah. But I, I can remember, uh, I can remember um, Descartes said the exact opposite. He said, we're all born with the autograph of God. Yeah. Uh, and so the idea that you're born, like, cause he, 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 he got that from, you know, when he went through the meditations and he went through all the, this cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. He said, that's the highest level, it's the thing that, we, but he, he said, that is, we're born with the autograph of God. I think therefore God is as well. 
you know, and so the, the idea that we're born with that, I think is a fixed part of the human psyche. That is a fixed thing. But the other things are there as well, and it's for the human being to choose, basically. We believe it's a voluntary agent. Human being is a volitional agent. Oh, you do believe that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't believe it's that the, the human being's action is determined? We believe in compatibilism. Okay. Uh, I, was, okay I was under the impression that because it's, yeah. it's a debate, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Compatibilism determines... No, we're, we're, we believe in compatibilism. Actually, do you mind me asking you about that? Yeah, of course. Because I am struggling with this concept that, you know, God is sovereign. And so he knows what's going to happen in the future, right? So he has complete sovereignty over humankind. But at the same time, he's giving them free will. So it seems like from the outset that there's a contradiction here. Because how can you really have free will if God has sort of uh, written out exactly what you're going to do? And I've been studying this uh, Catholic uh, monk called uh, Spanish monk in the Middle Ages and something Molin, Molin, Molinism. Molinism, yeah. And he, he, William Lane Craig is doing something on that. Yeah, yeah, he had an interesting idea that he said God had, has middle The wood knowledge, middle knowledge, yeah. Middle knowledge. yeah. So, I mean, what would be a good way of um, explaining the Islamic argument for that? Because it's a struggle to think, well, I'm free, but actually God has written it out. I, I should start off by saying, quite frankly, that the, just as Christianity has divided on the issue, so has Islam, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, if we're being completely honest, right? I take the compatibilist position, but there were more positions that are closer to crass determinism and there were more positions that are closer to libertarian free will within the Islamic right. idea. Just like in secularism, there, is, there are all three views. Yeah. Same thing with Islam, same thing with Christianity. You have Armenianism, you have Calvinism, oh, yeah. and then you have Molinism, as you've mentioned, right? Uh, with Molina, uh, and which William Lane Craig is defending the position of uh, academically right now. Uh, the, the wood knowledge or the middle knowledge is actually a... I was looking myself to find if there's any. Uh, are you gonna go? Oh, yeah, you go. Oh, it's nice to meet you. You too, my friend. Yeah, see you later. Yeah. See thank you. Later. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's take a picture. Well, you've got you've got it all there, so you know you can. <laughs> let's take a picture. Come. Wait. Um, do, you want, do you want him to take it for you? Yes, please. Yeah. We'll talk about middle knowledge in a second. Yeah. Cheers. Thank nice you. Time. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. See you later. Robert. So middle knowledge, um, actually there's a view which is commensurate with it in the Islamic paradigm. And it took me a long time to find it. But there's a guy called Nezbuddin al-Tufi which has the same, pretty much the same view. But he said that God, not the same view, he had a slightly different view. Which is that God holds you to account based on what knowledge you would have done if you were free. If you're independent, okay, then God holds you to account based on that knowledge. Okay, now that's for me it's a problematic view because to, for, for on a log, on logical grounds and also on textual grounds. But I'm just letting you know that there is a, there is a kind of similar view in the Islamic view. Um, the the main opinion, the compatibilist opinion, is that there is an intersection, there is a symbiosis, there is some kind of compatibilism between godly determinism and human free will. Human being, from one perspective, is completely volitional. But from another perspective, is totally dependent. He's dependent existentially. That without God, human being would not exist. Just like without the sun, this tree would not exist in front of us. But God has also allowed the human being to make decisions on his own behalf, which don't interfere with his own sovereignty. How that takes place, the mechanisms of that, I don't know. And in fact, I believe they're unknowable. Because the Sunni position, the Sunni Islamic position is that any, anything relating to God's attributes is fundamentally, the howness, the mechanics of it are fundamentally unknowable. Well, so if Sufi I would, yeah. Is that the Sufi and the Shia as well? Sufis are like, for example, when we say Sufis, it's not really a creedal school of thought. Right. It's referring to like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so most Sufis are Sunni. Or, or at least they would claim to be, right? They would say I am Sunni. If, if, if you meet any Sufi, I have, you know, they would usually say I am, you know, I'm Sunni, I'm Diobandi, I'm whatever, yeah. Uh, the Shi'i position, Shi'ism, like uh, Tulsi and others like that, are, is similar to the Martesli opinion, which comes closer to uh, libertarianism, which is uh, what there's a person called um, Al Qadi Abdul Jabbar, who's a Martesli. He wrote a book. And in that book, he said that basically God creates what we do. 
God knows. Uh, he did it. Martezil is a misconception. People think that he, the Martezilis believe that God doesn't know. But he affirmed that God knows the future. Yeah. But lets the human being act on his own, act on his own spirit, on his own uh, way. How that, how that works out is, is problematic. That's why the, the other Sunnis have said no action. It says it will threaten the sovereignty of God. Yes. That's, that's the mainstream Ash'ari opinion, which is like uh, represented by Al-Baqalani and Juwaini and these are the Al-Ghazali. Yeah. And uh, it's also the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah and the uh, Hanbalis. For example, Ibn Taymiyyah said it and Ibn Qayyim said that. Uh, yeah. So there's a range of opinions here. Fascinating stuff, yeah. Very fascinating. Not to think about. Thank you, my friend. But just to, just to get, there's a verse in the Quran which kind of... Quran says, when they deviated, God deviated their hearts. So in other words, it's like this. God is all-powerful, is sovereign. He has given human beings free will. Ibn Khaim al jawziyah in his book, Shifa al-Alil, he states that it's the example of a person. It's like a slave. Okay? A slave has a slave owner. And he says to him, look, here's money. Go and buy X, Y, Z. If you don't buy what I want, if you don't buy what I want, I'm going to punish you. And if you buy what I want, I'm going to reward you. So he gives him permission. Ithan. It's in Arabic, Ithan. He gives him permission to go and buy whatever he wants. He says that, who is really in charge here? God is in charge. God is in charge. In this analogy, it's like the slave and the slave owner. He says, God is in charge, but he only gives human beings permission. And since that permission doesn't escape God's sovereignty, there's no contradiction here. So he's saying that, for example, that God gives human beings free will. But since that free will doesn't escape God's permission and or his sovereignty, therefore there's no contradiction between human free will and godly determinism. Well, it, it limits your options. Then. How so? Well, I mean, because if God knows, then he sets some kind of parameters by virtue of knowing. I mean, the thing is, I don't feel like knowledge itself is the problem here. I, I think if, if I know, if God knows that you're going to hell, and then you commit actions. His knowing doesn't mean that he, you know, he's he's forced you to go to hell. Yeah, but you make any choice. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that he forced you to go to hell. No, but, but his knowledge doesn't change, right? It's not like he knows. That yeah, he I agree. Mind. I understand. So but what I'm saying sense, is, that, yeah. in that sense, you're just carrying out some kind of like biological deterministic uh, behavior. No, no. But then, if if we're saying that there's human being has free will at the same time here, so God's knowledge doesn't inhibit the human free will. So the question would be, how does godly knowledge of the of the future inhibit human free will? Well, it limits your options. It means you can only have, instead of having, I don't know, infinite options, you have like a hundred options. How? How? Well, just, 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 by, just by virtue of, 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 of setting some kind of parameter around the... Um, I mean, if, if you know London, for example, you know the parameters of London. You know that this is going to be outside, this is going to be inside. You have only a few routes that you can, you know, explore. So, I mean, I guess... No, no, but if the knowledge is based on the actions of the human being and the godly determinism working together. Right. So, ah. so, so the knowledge is not despite human free will. Right, okay, okay, okay. So it's not a negation yeah. regardless. Okay. What, what becomes difficult is how could God will it? How could God create it? That's where, the, that's where the difficulty is. And so how can a human being be free, uh, free at the same time God has willed everything? We're saying there's a mechanism at play which no one knows. Is it, um, the how question is unknowable. It's like asking the question, how does God see? Exactly. How does God hear? I, I don't know. You, you, you don't see any problem with that from the Islamic perspective that you cannot know these kind of things. Because, you know, some, some common arguments yeah. that come from Christians towards Islam is that, you know, that there's some kind of, with all due respect, some kind of sort of anti-intellectualism when it comes to these things whereby you just don't know, right? That's it, don't even No, no, explore. no, I mean, the Christian polemics on this issue, yeah. in, intra-Christian discussion, Calvin versus Ar 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 Arminius uh, and Mo Molina and so on, is, is very similar it to... Very similar. The, right. Even, let me put, put it this way for you. Atheists are the, 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 the debating it. So you have atheists who are compatibilists, like uh, Daniel Dennett, yeah. and then you have Sam Harris, who's a determinist. So, I mean, this discussion, by leaving Islam, let's say, someone is so worried about the Khadr question, he leaves Islam. Oh, I don't know how it works. Okay, what are you going to become? Christian? He's going to see the same discussion there. He's going to become atheist, he's going to see the same discussion there. He's going to see... So, it's, 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 it's a difficulty with the human project. 
is something that human beings have found hard to understand. How is it on the secular paradigm that an uninterrupted causal chain of antecedent events uh, causes the future, causes the present, but at the same time, human being has this volitional free will? That's the secular question. The, the religious question is, how is godly determinism and human free will commensurate with one another or compatible with one another? And that is, it permeates through all three world, major world religions, uh, Abrahamic religions and all the other religions, in fact. So this question is difficult. In terms of the mechanisms of it, it's unknowable. And that's why if, if, if it wasn't unknowable, you wouldn't have, it's one of the biggest debates in philosophy, secular philosophy. It's one of the biggest debates in religion. If it wasn't that difficult in terms of me mechanics, someone would have some kind of answer for it. But there, is, there are debates for that reason. From the Islamic perspective, you're not saying we shouldn't explore. You're just saying even if we explore, it's just extremely hard. I'm saying that there are some aspects of this discussion which are going to be fundamentally unknowable. That's the, the mechanistic question. And, and, and therefore, we should keep exploring, but we, won't, we just won't know it. The saying... I'm saying there are some things which can be known yeah. and some other things which cannot be known. Right. So the things that we say as Muslims that cannot be known is the howness. The mechanistic question, the kaif, how is it? How is godly determinism and human free will come together? We, 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 we postulate that they do. In fact, I, I think it's almost undeniable or unfalsifiable to say that right now when you're drinking, as you're talking, as you're acting, that you think you're in charge of your own actions. I think you do. I think I do. And if we didn't think that, as John Locke said, then the criminal justice system would be... A, would be a, because, I, in fact, I can say, well, I go to court and say, I was, uh, I, I, was, I was encumbered by an antecedent causal chain of uninterrupted events. No one has ever said that in a court, you know, it's never been a defense and for good reason. Because one of the presuppositions of justice or justice being served in a, in a law setting, legal setting, is that human beings are volitional, unless of course uh, they are mental or insane or something like that. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's fundamentally impossible to deny or falsify the fact that I am saying, first person subjective, I'm in charge of my actions and speech right now. At the same time, it's almost impossible to, uh, to also postulate, unless you want to deny causality, that there is an ant antecedent causal and uninterrupted chain of events. So you are, you are in, even if we, put the, if we park the religious discourse to one side, you have this tension. Yeah. And we're saying that, then, that's why many compatibilists say, there must be this point of compatibilism, the mechanisms of what I'm saying is unknowable. One last question. Yes, sir. Is it the will of God in Islam that all human beings, uh, as much as possible, gain uh, entry into heaven, go to heaven? Is, is it his will or is it, has he sort of in a Calvinistic sense more like predetermined people? The will of God from an Islamic perspective is divided into two. What some call al-irad al kawniyyah and al-irad al sharia So the al-irad al kawniyyah is the cosmological will and al-irad al sharia is the legalistic will. So if we're saying is it the will of God, then from a legalistic or shari perspective, yes it is. But from a cosmological perspective, no it is not. So, so then how, how do we differentiate? We're saying that God has created volitional creatures. Independent, uh, not independent in the, in the strictest sense of existential independence, but to make their own decision making, they have free will, yeah? God has made free willed creatures. He has given them guidelines, told them this is what we want you to do, this is a test of life. And a favorable outcome is for you to believe in God, which will satisfy your own egoistic self-inclination. From that perspective, yes, God wills that human beings follow the guidelines. And that's why in the Quran it says, What would Allah do? This is a Quran verse in the Quran. Surah Nisa. What would Allah do with your punishment? In shakartum wa amantum. If you're grateful and you're believers. Like what, other, what, what gain is there from a godly perspective from punishing you? There's no gain there. So from that perspective, yes. But from the perspective of what will be the will that is carried out, well, the will that is carried out will be the one that is in, in congruence with justice. It's like to say a judge. I know analogies are all problematic, and this is a problematic analogy. I'm telling you that from the beginning. 
but he wants to judge in favor of the defendant or somebody you know he wants to judge however the the, 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 the case ma ma makes it makes it the case that he must be prosecuted for example if you're a judge and your son was in front of you court yani, you would want him to be innocent of course you'd want him to be innocent but in terms of you're willing him to be innocent if you are a judge and you have to judge against him, then you will him to be guilty, if need be. Do you see the point? So this, this, the, 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 the ambiguity, we have to disambiguate this, this word called will. Because the will can have more than one denotation or understanding. So if we're talking about from a cosmological perspective, then no, then if we're not, then yes. Thank you so much, man. What was your name again? Man? Mustafa. Oh, Mustafa. Yeah. <laughs> Good to meet you, man. Yeah. I am from Islamic background, but you know. Are you from Turkey? No, no, I'm from Iraq. Oh, okay. Inshallah, I come back to the dream. Inshallah. Take care. Think about it, yeah?